The Shoshone power plant in Glenwood Canyon suffered extensive damage this morning when one of the penstocks funneling water to the turbines ruptured. The plant has been shut down for repairs that could take as long as two years. The nine-foot diameter pipe blew about 5.15 this morning, sending millions of gallons of water through the plant and down the mountainside in less than an hour. CDOT has closed access to the river near the... 5.15 this morning, the Colorado River ripped through a weak spot in the water pipe just above the roof line of the Shoshone power plant, flooding the plant with eight feet of water and several tons of rock and soil. And dumping... It wasn't just an issue of generating environmentally friendly electricity when the Shoshone penstock failed on June 20th, 2007. The Shoshone is one of the oldest hydroelectric plants in the West and has the oldest water rights to the Colorado River. It gets to call or use the water before anyone else. Shoshone is a non-consuming user. Its turbines are driven by river flow, not from water stored in the reservoir. And the water it uses is returned to the river, cleaner than when it entered the plant. Shoshone's water use actually keeps the water in the river. It makes the river run. The Shoshone being offline had the potential to destroy the region's $2 million summer recreation-based economy, a multi-million dollar endangered fish recovery program, and downstream water quality. The plant had to be back up and running. The sooner the better. XL Energy, which owns and operates Shoshone Power Plant, contacted our team because the work we'd done in Telluride the previous year where we'd laid pipe on heavily forested 33-degree mountain incline. That was supposed to be an impossible job, and we did it. They told us the Shoshone job was even more impossible. Construction on the original penstock began in 1904, just one year after the first road through the canyon was built. The plant began operating five years later. We knew we didn't have five years, too many people, and some of the most beautiful country in the world, were at risk. What if, instead of removing the old penstocks and replacing them, we built new pipe inside the old? Slip lining would be better, less expensive, and safer. The slightly smaller diameter wouldn't affect flow rate enough to cause problems, and the finished pipe should last at least as long as the original. XL accepted our proposal, and we got to work. Safer and easier does not mean safe and easy, especially in the extreme environment of Glenwood Canyon. The canyon is so deep that in the winter, the sun doesn't reach the canyon floor until lunchtime. Temperatures plummet 30 degrees or more when the sun sets. Wind, snow, and ice are routine weather conditions. We're working at altitude. The twin 108-inch diameter pipes run parallel to each other right up the side of the canyon, from 5,900 feet above sea level at the base to 6,058 feet at the top. And almost all of it, from the base to 60 feet from the upper edge, lies at a 45-degree angle. Then it levels out to a mere 22-degree incline. Once you get over the intimidation factor, <laughs> the first challenge is just getting to the job site. From the office, it's 20 minutes in the truck, followed by 10 minutes on a four-wheel drive ATV through a mile of tunnel inside the mountain. Or... 246 stairs. Top side, we set up our workshop, including two winches, floodlights, and safety gear more often used by miners and mountain climbers than pipe layers. Down below, the first step was to make a bigger hole. The damaged pipe was removed and we cut an opening in each penstock large enough for the new pipe sections. 
The pipe is moved one section at a time to the bottom of a penstock and secured with four lines to a harness, which is connected to the winch cable. Once the section is in position, the winch pulls it into the old penstock and up, and up, and up. When it's snugged into place, we spot weld four one-foot segments to secure it. Remove the harness and cables and lower them back down the pipe to begin rigging the next section. Grind edges to compensate for occasional small differences in fit. Fit up with pry bars. Pull it home with some come-alongs. Check alignment, check gap, check deflection. Put the grout hole straight up. And weld the two sections together. Welding and grinding might not seem like a big deal until you remember that we're standing on a 45 degree incline in the middle of a very long dark tunnel that's nearly nine feet across. And we have to make a perfect weld around the entire circumference. It takes about two hours to rig, lift, and weld a section in place. We work 10 to 11 hours a day, and on a good day, we'll finish five sections. That's about 50 feet of new pipe, a pace that's put us ahead of schedule. We've run into surprisingly few problems, and those have been solved quickly. Some parts of this job are simply more challenging than others. 246 stairs. The top and bottom of the penstocks are narrower than the rest. Our first reducer segment got hung up, so we had to back it out and try again. The only extra cutting we've had to do so far was near the top, where the angle changes from 22 to 45 degrees. The radius of the new pipe didn't quite fit the old. We lowered the section out, cut off a one-foot piece of pipe, and pulled the adjusted section back into place. This time, it was a perfect fit. The job site inspectors, once they get over the dizziness, have been impressed by our work and our safety record. This job has taken skill, guts, and great communication. Our crew has all that and more. We're doing the impossible again.